Hey, I got a question for you. Are you chasing money or are you chasing fame? If you're trying to build an online business, there seems to be some confusion. We're going to talk about that and much, much more in just a second. Today's episode of the Hustlers Kung Fu Show is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at the first link under the video. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. And remember, not only am I recommending the service, I've been a subscriber to Audible for the last seven years. My recommendation this month is to get Primal Branding. It's a great book to help to give you a cohesive ideal and some elements on how to brand your business. A lot of people who are chasing fame. They think they're chasing money, but they're chasing fame. And this is how I can tell you if you're one of them. The internet is in a constant state of evolution. Each year it changes. Sometimes it changes monthly. And if you're on the old school method of get a bunch of followers and then pitch to them, more than likely you're chasing fame. If you are on that tip of being everywhere, trying every new app, being on every new platform, and you just got yourself scattered and you feel diffused, you feel stretched to the max, and you're still not making any money, more than likely you're chasing fame versus money. There's a few things that you can do to make a big difference in your online business and you can start today. One of the big things is picking some kind of discipline, some kind of topic. And I keep saying some kind because you can make money from a website, you can make money from a YouTube channel, you can make money from a podcast, you can make money from a Facebook page, you can make money from a Facebook group. There's a lot of different ways that you can make money online. And that's part of the reason people struggle and that's part of the reason people get into the chasing of fame. It looks like they're chasing money. I'm over here, I'm tweeting, I'm Instagramming, I'm doing all of this stuff. But if you've been doing this for the last year and you're not making any more money or some really bad cases, you're not making any money at all, you're hustling backwards. You're chasing fame and you don't even know it. If you're chasing money and there's something else that you should chase before you chase money, you should chase happiness first and then chase money. Big difference because there are a lot of people who have money and they're unhappy. <laughs> it's just, it's a sad thing, but there are people out there like that. So we're just going to talk about chasing money right now. Once you figure out what you plan to own and dominate, see, this is the thing. The internet is so huge. There's so many people. There's so many topics. There's so many genres that you can become really good in one place and dominate. And I'll just give you an example of something that I did last year. I put together this package, this program, and I sold 450 people on that program. Not a lot of people was an email list of 1,500 people. No, it was an email list of 500 people, which means highly, you know, 97% conversion rate. And I did $70,000 in 10 weeks. What I learned from the experience and what I learned from the experiment, because it was an experiment, was targeted, targeted, targeted. If it's highly targeted, you have the right people on your list, it is easy to make money. But let's get back to the part before easy. You got to have the right product. You have to have the right people. You have to have the right list. Those three things are crucial because what I used to do and many of you still do is create a product first, then go ahead and find an audience. That's hustling backwards. It works. People made a lot of money. But what you should do is focus on the marketplace. You should focus on the audience first. And that's going to take some time, which is usually what causes problems because you'll get someone who's, I got to make some money right fucking now. And when you have to make money right now, there's no time for introspection. There's no time for research. There's just no time because you got to make money right now. You're putting yourself in a very bad position when you have to make money right now. 
So let's just clear up something. If you're broke, if you've been laid off, you only have a few bucks to your name, the first thing that you should do is get a job. Part-time job, uh, hustle with Uber, hustle with uh, Lyft, something, tax rate, get yourself a job. And this is why. When you have to make money and you're trying to hustle and you don't have hustle skills, the desperation is written all over your face. You are trying so hard. You're putting so much effort and it's so easy for you to burn out, become demoralized, lose your mind and just go off and like, these people, they don't know, know a good deal. You know, I'm trying to give them some. No, no, that's all about you. It's all about what you're trying to get. And it comes across that way. And that's why you don't sell nothing. So if you are that broke, you are that miserable. If you're sleeping on your friend's sofa, it, get a job. And prepare to have that job for one, two, three, four years while you hustle on the side. Because this is the truth of the matter. If you were good enough to just come off of that couch and start hustling and making money in 30 days, making money in 60 days, making money in 90 days, your ass would have never got to that couch. Tough love, I know, but it's the truth. So think about that. Now, how do you start to chase money? Step by step. That's what people want. Give me step one, which is pick something you want to focus on. The diversification methodology on I'm doing 10 different things online, it's not going to work. Pick one thing and focus on that one thing for a minimum of 30 to 90 days. That's it. Nothing else. No auxiliary, no auxiliary, no uplift. One thing. To really kill it, you'd probably be better off focusing on one thing for six months. Now, this is the parameter before you start adding something else. You want to make $10,000 from that one thing before you add something else, before you go out and do something else, before you start doing joint partnerships. Because if you can make $10,000 and dedicate yourself to one thing, then there's a process that comes from that. There's things that you learn. And once you have the foundation together, then you can add something else and make 20. Then you can add something else and make 30. See, I'm, I'm making these little jumps because the reality is for you to go from absolutely nothing to six figures is probably a million to one. And it's not because you're stupid. It's not because you don't have the ability. It's because you don't have the experience. I don't care what company that you look at, Facebook, Google, when you look at the management and it's called senior management for a reason, most of, those, most of those people are over 50 because they have the experience to run a company. The energy that it takes to start a company is vastly different than the energy it takes to run and maintain a company and grow, grow as a profitable enterprise. It's different energy. So if you have nothing, you are in startup mode. You're in hustle mode, you're in scaling mode, which is different than making a monthly profit mode. Big difference. So that's one of the reasons that you've got to pick something. Step number two, every week you go back over what you did. And if you're not making any money, ask yourself, why are the things that I'm doing are these profit making activities? I had a client who was spending 80% of their time on nonprofit activities, 80%. So when I jumped in, and for those of you who want to consult deal, I'll get into that at the end of the video. I went ahead and got rid of 70% of that 80% of the stuff that wasn't working, but that wasn't making money. It was working, but it wasn't making money. And profitability improved in 90 days tenfold because Many people focus their time, like with social media. I'm a member of a lot of masterminds and groups, and I've heard it over and over again, and I've experienced it myself, that whenever I put something together, my email list killed it, my group killed it, but social media, not so much conversion, because those people don't know you. You got to get, you, you got to make love to them. And... If you're out there killing yourself on social media and you're just like, okay, I got all these followers, but I'm not making any money. I'm engaging with all these people, but I'm not making any money. I'm doing all this stuff, but I'm not making any money. And the thing is, 
you're not focusing on money making activities. So step three, what are money making activities? Because I already know where you're going with that. Things that generate sales. So you, you got this thing like, we'll just call this the sale. How do you get to the sale? You must have a product or service. You must have marketing that lets people know that you have a product or service. And then you must establish trust. That's kind of it in a nutshell. That's what you got to do. How do you do this? You have a blog. You have a YouTube channel. You have a podcast. These are what I call traffic drivers because if you're brand new, nobody knows who you are, you need something to drive traffic. And then it's going to take time. Unless you have a lot of money and you can go for paid advertising. And if you got a million dollars, you can blow up online in 30 days. Sure. Yep, it can happen. You can create a viral video. Psst, most viral videos are manufactured. Just saying. Oh, those are some of the things. And you have to distinguish between chasing fame and chasing money. Big, big difference. Because one of the big changes I made in my business was I got rid of a lot of stuff. I, you know, I would measure and audit myself and I was like, okay, I spend three, four hours here in the Facebook group and that makes me no money. It got me influence and it made people happy, but it didn't convert to cash three to four hours a day, five days a week. It's 80 hours a month on a non-profit generating activity. It looks good. You know, Facebook group numbers were going up, but when I audit myself, it's like, this has got to go. So... Part of this thing is understanding what makes money for your business could be different than my business and applying yourself based upon the numbers. Because, you know, many people have this thing, I want to go with my gut and my intuition. And I believe in intuition and I believe in the gut. But typically, good intuition usually comes from a lot of experience. Good decisions from the gut come from a lot of experience. And a lot of experience usually comes from messing up. And that's one of the things that I think when you listen to people online, they don't tell you their failures. They're like, I did this, I did this, this went well. What about the other 50 things that went wrong? You don't hear about that. So you're just thinking, wow, they started, they came off their, their, their sister's sofa, and now they have a seven, eight figure business. No, 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 no. There's a lot more to it because... I know some of these people, and I'm not going to get into the name and name, but this is the thing that happens. Just for those of you who are like beating yourself up and it's just like, here's such and such who's an influencer. And you're thinking that it was an overnight journey. Well, typically, if someone comes out of nowhere, right, and they're everywhere and they're, they're rising and they've got a book on Amazon or they're here or they're on all these podcasts, typically, somehow, some way, they reached a major influencer. They could be a friend. Their father, could be, they could be related. You don't know the backstory. So here's this person who is here, and then they hook up with someone who's here. You can't even see them. They're out the frame. Then all of a sudden, they're here, and it just looks like they had the right strategy. No. Influencers are really, really huge. If you have a blogger who has influence, and these people know their power. They know what they can do. If let's just take a, a big person, someone who has a million followers, right? And say they have an email list of 750,000 people. They can mention you on their YouTube channel or blog, and that's instant money for you. Instant. So understand that when you're fighting, you can't compare and contrast yourself to these people who are not really walking your walk. Find someone who had to struggle. Find someone who doesn't have this super large business because the reality is anyone, in my estimation, can start a business that creates a livable income and a livable income is 50000 or more within 6 to 24 months online from scratch, from nothing. No extra knowledge, no hookup, no influencers, straight from scratch. But you will be hustling your face off. You'll be working your ass off and you're going to be putting in the time. And that's the step that many people don't want to do. Hence the chasing of fame, of doing all this stuff, having all these accounts, being all over the place on social media. I don't do much on Twitter. I've never done much on Twitter. I've had like six, seven accounts. 
from my first interaction with Twitter, and once again, this is nothing against Twitter, I didn't like it. Didn't like it. Now, the things that I like, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and I'm developing an affinity for Snapchat, I'm doing well because they feed into stuff that I like. So if you someone tells you you should get on the social media platform and you absolutely despise it, leave it alone. Because you hate it, you hate the, the way it works, you don't want you don't want to do the lingo. You just it's just gonna be a pain in the ass. You can force yourself to do well, maybe you'll like it in the beginning, but after a few months of trying it and you still despise it, hmm, it might be time to let that go. Because Hey, try anything. Now, when I started YouTube, I absolutely hated YouTube, but I had immediate feedback. I hated YouTube, but I was making sales of my book just like that. Put up a video, whoo, book sale. So it was just like action result. So that kept me motivated. And then I got to the point where I started to like to do this stuff. But if it was, if I was just putting up videos and there was no book sales and nothing was happening, you wouldn't be talking to me today. I wouldn't be here. That's just real. So those are some of the things you have to understand. Now, with the chasing of fame, you have to distinguish what is feeding your hind brain. That's that primitive brain that responds to certain stimuli. So if, and this is a test for you. If you put up a post on Facebook and you're used to putting up a post and getting 10, 30, 40 likes, then you put up a post and it gets no likes and you feel kind of bad, you're chasing fame. You're not chasing money. Uh, I've got other stuff that I do that really doesn't get a lot of engagement. Uh, doesn't doesn't have huge numbers. I got a YouTube channel that I actually will stop posting to. It has 300 subscribers, not a lot of views, but I made 15 grand from that channel. Not a lot of engagement from the outside. It doesn't really look like shit, but the channel was geared to make money. So that's part of the whole landscape of things that you have to do for you to begin to experience profitability, money coming your way, and building your internet business. Now, this is the consultant thing because I'm going to get people who are going to ask, and I'm just going to say the number real quick. Opening up the door is $5,000, and it's a 90-day process, and there's a lot of conversations between you and I. So if that scared you, don't listen to the rest of this. <laughs> There's no point. You go ahead below the video, get on the email list, and then you can get the free training where you have to show up one to five times a week. I will teach you how to make money. You can ask questions. It's a live stream. It's a go-to webinar too, going on at the same time. So you can get in where you can fit in. For those of you who are interested in a higher level of training, you want me to hold your hand to be your BFF, this is how the process works. You must fill out a survey in an application. Then once you do that, I'll get back to you because I'm going to be honest with you. If I don't think I can help your business, I'm not going to take your money. There are certain businesses I like to work in. There's certain things I'm really good at. And if I don't have the juice to help your business, we're not, we're not, we're, we're not going on a date. You don't have to worry about who pays because we're not going out. And that's something that I did last year and it felt great. It was awesome because this is straight up. There's some businesses that are just boring as fuck and I don't really want anything to do with them. I know that sounds kind of elitist. It's just like you should take any money, but I'm part of the chasing happiness. I do things to make me happy. I do things to maintain my freedom. And it's been working out very well for me for the last seven years. So that's the process. And what does the 90 day process include? Number one, I'm going to ask you a shitload of questions and we're going to work on what makes you tick because in my consulting life, I've had people who come to me for X, but once we get in, they need B and G and F and H, but they want X because they think that's what they need. And part of my fiduciary duty as your personal consultant is to give you what you need, not what you want, which is the reason the price tag is so high because I've had fights with clients. I've had people get mad at me. I have been cussed out. <laughs> and that is fun. It's just like, okay, you got that off your chest. You feel good. Get your ass back to work. So that's the new thing. So if you want to, I'll put a link below to the survey and the application. And if that's what you want to do, we'll go from there once you fill out the survey and the application. 
So that's how that works. And for those of you who are still here because you were merely curious, below every video is some goodies, some good stuff to help you. And now here are some annotations. If you're on desktop, you'll see them. If you're not, there's a little eye. You have to put your finger, if you're on your phone, you have to put it on the screen and the little eye pops up. And then there's some stuff for you there. So if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, get on the email list, do all of that stuff, and I'll see you in the next episode.